Uh, what's up YouTube, Dale here from Zephyr War Games with Joe again. Um, Joe is bringing us his second deck which he ran today and you went 4-1. You went 4-1 with us. So he came second with... Raw DDD. Raw DDD. <laughs> My god. So without further ado we're going to crack straight into that uh, and let him show us how you make Raw DDD. So how you make God Cards work officially. Um, so the inspiration for this deck was um, how um, from one guy's video about his build for Ra, and he uses the Heretics to make Beatrice to send Ra's um, other forms to the grave, and then copy them with Phantom of Chaos. So I've been trying to, I've been trying to make that, and it works, but it's quite slow and requires your opponent to have a lot of, um, at least a setup to make it easy. Um, so then after, obviously still playing DDD, I realised, hang on a minute, with two cards you can make two level sixes and you can make Beatrice. So using that, I've made a build that, as proof of today, works really well and can just bust out Ra constantly and get the loop going. What did you face today? Um, I faced Speedroids, Buster Bladers, Medulches, Yang Zing, Metal Foe, and uh, my other matchup was Dynamist. And your loss came against? Uh, Yang Zings. Yang Zing, that Cool. So, uh, the deck's basically built like majority of um, other DDD decks. Um, so you've got your three Ragnaroks, um, two Thomas for this build because you don't want to clog too much, um, and you need to make room for the piece, for the raw pieces. Um, Three Keplers for your searches to search a spurt, search spell and get um, those plays going. Um, wherever he is, you play the three Swell Slimes. Swimes are gone walkies. Yeah, there we go. Um, the three Swells and the three Necros. These are your, in most, in Obviously in every DD deck these are important combo pieces, but in this deck you these are the most essential to get the bar going. Um, so everything in this deck is to draw through your deck to get to these pieces. Um, luckily and normally you don't have to draw as much to get to these because you have searches and searches. Um, but that's for that. And now for Ra. Two copies of normal wing dragon of Ra. Um, you should all know what Ra does, um, but basically um, he requires three sacrifices. Um, if you normal summon him um, normally, he pay you can you can drop your life points to a hundred, and the amount that you've dropped becomes his attack and defense. And then you can pay a thousand to target monster in the field and destroy it. Now that's the effect that you will use most and pretty much all the times so if you get him out, because you essentially want to get him out with this, which is fear mode. Um, now you can tribute this card from your field to special summon Ra from your hand or deck, ignoring the summoning conditions, and Ra's attack becomes 4000 4000. Um, the use I used them a lot today though, um, is to, you can summon him on your opponent's field by tributing the three monsters. Now in this current meta, this card is really good, so even if you're not playing this kind of deck, you can use Ra for your side deck and it's really good. And to round up for Ra, is a Mortal Phoenix. You want to play that one because you don't want a dead draw. Um, and you summon Immortal Phoenix by dumping it to the graveyard with Beatrice or by any other means by discarding. And um, if Ra leaves the field and goes to grave, you special summon this card from your grave. Nothing can chain to the summoning. And same effect as Ra, you can pay a thousand, but then he sends a monster from the opponent's field to the graveyard and so destroy. And at the end of the turn, you tribute him, and then you get Sphere Mode from your hand, deck, or grave. So as you can see, you've got a free card loop by just using these, um, these free cards. Um, to, for the rest of the engine, you play Phantom of Chaos. You, send, you just play Phantom of Chaos to copy Sphere Mode, so you don't have to go through the trouble of having to play Sphere Mode. Your opponent's field waits the end, comes back to yours, tribute off. You just copy it from the graveyard by banishing it. And you tribute um, Phantom of Chaos to get one and you get the combo. Um, you play three, even though you only play two sphere modes, you play three of this because you just want to see this as soon as you can. Um, and then to round up the monsters, pretty one max C just for consistency. 
those are the monsters for spells again standard free contracts search all your um, DDDs uh, two swamps um, again more important this deck because you just want to get your two Gengars out in the field um, so if you don't get the necro slime you've got this so it's really important draw power free or lower darkness if you're playing a dark deck you play this card two trading um, you've got level 8s so you use trading just to dump them to the graveyard you've got more combo pieces in your grave just thin your deck get to your phantom of chaos and go from there uh, one one for one gets your Kepler to get to your contract and um, you can also use this to dump the um, dead vase out of your hand, so like sphere mode or phoenix mode, mostly immortal phoenix. Because um, sphere mode isn't really dead in your hand because then you just use it like a kaiju, just get rid of your opponent's stuff, give them something they don't want. Uh, foolish Barrel uh, dumps your slimes, dumps your DDDs that you need, um, dumps your raw pieces that you need. It's just really good in deck. Twin Twister, you don't want back row, especially when you're going through, um, not so much, I don't want to say that because really you're not going through so much to get raw out. Um, you're using actually quite little, um, but you don't want your raw to be stopped by any back row and you don't want to run things like mirror forces and all that kind of stuff, so you play Twin Twisters as well to get dead stuff out of your hand. And then we play one Mound of the Bound Creator. Now I wanted to put this in and to do that I did take out a second Twin Twisters. Um, mostly just because it works similarly to Twin Twisters um, in the sense that it protects your, um, your God card from being disrupted and hurt by your opponent's card effects. Um, but not only that, this card has another target in the deck and I'll get to it when I get to him. Um, Essentially though, you can probably tell just by the effect, it, level 10s cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. And um, if they destroy a monster in battle, you burn the opponent for a thousand. And if this card dies, you can search a divine card and add it to your hand. So that's that. So those are the spells. And you only play three traps, which is the one witch and two strikes. Um, these can be anything you want really, you can even play this deck with no traps if you really want to be that and just go for more spells for more consistency, you can probably like up Thomas to 3 and up trade into 2 which you can get rid of those 2 um, and then you can just play one um, witch but I wanted to just play small traps just to help me with some matchups and then for the extra deck is uh, 3 arcs and 3 Genghis um, normally nowadays you only see like arc at 2 um, all this ratio is just always jump around from 2's and 3's but in this build the extra deck is not really used as much in the sense of like variety um, you mostly just go into these guys first to make your Beatrice and then after that once you've got your raw pieces in the grave you kind of just want to play DDDs as normal um, until you get to your Phantom of Chaos and then raw can be fully used um, so i just gone for this, it just works really well, you just go into a lot of fusions and you just go into a lot of plays. Now here's where Mound of the Bound Creator has another target, um, Wave of Oblivion King Caesar Ragnarok. Being a level 10, he's actually affected by Mound, so you've got more protection for him, who's one of your biggest beat sticks in the extra deck, um, and can cause you some nice OTKs, and if he's protected by Mound of the Bound, um, it's just more protection and more ways to just end your opponent. So we got that. One Dante Pilgrim for your Beatrice target. And then that rounds up the fusions. XCs, uh, Kali Yuga, just standard really. Titanic, so understandable. Coach King Giant Trainer. Um, I rarely summon this guy because he needs three level eights. At the same time, you want the options to just spin your deck even more, and I've actually played this guy once. I didn't get into it for my Phantom of Chaos, but he still fulfilled his uses by filling my deck by three cards, and just getting more cards in my hand, essentially, less than my deck. Uh, for a level 7, just uh, Red Eyes Flare, you can go for Big Eye, and Big Eye can work because he just then uh, steals a monster, you can just tribute it for VAR, if you really want to, or just Sphere Mode. But I just gone for red eyes just for more burn damage. 
Um, and then for sixes, Beatrice and Strike Rounder. Beatrice, I've mentioned her throughout this whole video, so you all understand why. Um, she's in here, um, just dumps your R pieces, dumps more stuff into the graveyard, just literally just fins your deck and gets your stuff into the grave when, um, that you need. Um, Strike Bouncer, if she wasn't limited, I'd be playing another one, <laughs> essentially, but I've gone for Strike Bouncer. Now, you can go for the Vampiric Dragon, rank 6, but I think Strike Bouncer is just a little bit better just to negate those pesty monster effects on the field as well as burn your opponent. Um, just getting you that one little bit closer for game. Um, and that's mostly it. Um, the deck essentially just plays like normal DDDs as while you're playing it. But um, your main thing, as I said, get these guys in your hand. Fusion for your one Genghis, your first Genghis. Necro Slimes to banish um, your two cars to search your other um, Genghis overlay to Beatrice, Beatrice detaches you send your sphere mode first and then on their turn you detach the other one and then you send your immortal phoenix um, and then once you've done that, I, the reason I say send sphere mode first because you don't want to get into mentality that if you have phantom of chaos already in your hand um, you can then on that first turn summon Phantom of Chaos, copy the Sphere Mode, and then you get your Ra out straight away. So you will end your turn, your first turn, with a Beatrice who still has a material and a Ra at 4000, 4000, and you still have three car two cards left in your hand if you're going first. If you're going second, you've got three. It's very simple, very standard, and it's very fun, but at the same time, it's very strong. Not many people know. Um, have problems getting over 4,000, 4,000. You've got an ultimate Kaiju essentially, and you've got this who was really detrimental to one of my opponents because he couldn't get over it because he's just immune to everything. Um, so that's, re that's it really. So that's it for Joe's second concoction deck. Um, let us know what you think about it in the comments below. Also don't forget we have still got the um, winner pack for Invasion Vengeance. We've got three sets of three packs to give away for those. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. And as always guys, happy dawning. If you like that video, why not check out our other videos available. We've got more deck profiles, pack openings and of course duels. And don't forget to click on the most important button of all, that subscribe button right in the bottom left hand corner.